Today's 4 Deep Sports Talk broadcast is sponsored by Source Pumping and Sanitation. Simply the best at what they do. Visit them at sourcepumping.com. By Luca B. Signs. Visit them at lucabsigns.com. And by Career Insurance. For more information, go to careerinsurance.com. And by Wittenton Hardware. Visit them at wittentonhardware.com. And by Anytime Plumbing and Heating. For more information, go to anytimeplumbingandheating.com. By Frank Bedak Law Office. Visit them at bedaklaw.com. And by Dr. Scott J. Mandel. Visit them at superiorortho.com. And by Highland Hills Apartments. Visit them at highlandhillsapartments.com. It's a little stressed. Hey everybody, welcome to Bridgewater Random High School. I'm Dominic Damiano along with Thomas Pike, and we have a very uh, an interview here with uh, Craig Salvador, and he's going to talk to uh, Doug Alves in about 15 seconds. Then we're going to go to a pre-tape interview we had with Coach Bowen. Um, he's a good team. Um, considering that we're a good team as well. Um, obviously, these guys are undefeated, so they are um, definitely a, a quality club. So we, we um, you know, from a coaching standpoint, watching the film and based on a couple of things that didn't go well for us last game, a couple of adjustments to, to, to um, look forward to this game, but um, really looking forward to it, and I know the guys are. Who are some of the players on this BR team to look out for today that you think are going to make a big impact today? Uh, definitely um, Tony Fernandez, the guy's tough. These guys are big, so our, our big guys are really going to be important for us. Obviously, the, um, you know, the, 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 the usuals, the, the, the guys that score the ball, but um, look for Tony Fernandez, Sam Brown, Connor Rabinskis to um, really have an impact, as well as um, it's going to take an overall team effort to, to, to get it done against these guys. Hey, thank you for your time, Coach. Good luck today. Thanks, buddy. All right, back to you, Dom. All right, thanks, Craig. With that, we have another special interview from Christian uh, Rosero as he talks to Coach Bowen earlier today. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Christian Rosero of 4D Sports. I am here with the varsity boys basketball head coach of Brockton High. Um, this is Coach Bowen. Um, coach, coming out of your last... Oh, my fault. Oh, you don't know it's a video. That's why we're not here. Today. From Bad All right, that was Christian Bracero earlier today, Tommy, talking with uh, Coach Bowen. But before I chime in, I wanted to get these guys' opinion, what they thought, you know, we'll start with uh, Christian. Can you hear us? Yep, I'm here, Tom. Of course so, I am. I'm ready for this. So uh, before, we, before we take it over, and you guys are going to help us out in between the game, 
Uh, what were your thoughts talking to Coach Bowen today? Well, Brockton's definitely ready. Let's just say that. Um, they're ready for all, all possibilities of pressure. Um, it doesn't even seem like they're even pressured at all. Like, they're coming in here undefeated. Uh, so I think they're pretty ready. Like, they, they feel pretty confident coming right. into this game. And what about you, Craig? Get a chance. I mean, you did a good job talking. You always do a good job. But as far as talking with uh, Coach Alves, what type of impression did he leave you coming into this game? Yeah, I got to talk to Coach Alves, and he's coming in this game very confident. He was saying that uh, although Brockton is a good team, he is coaching a good team in his own right. Bridgewater Random. They did play them uh, it was either last week or the week before that and they really brought it to them. They uh, lost in a tough one. They lost 79-72 to 72, so again it was a close game and he's confident that they, they can uh, beat this Brockton team, give it this Brockton team their first loss. Alright, we'll be we're going to step away. We're going to step away for 30 seconds. We'll be right back with Brockton High School and the Bridgewater Random Trojans right after this. All right, welcome back, Sorry, Thomas. Hey, Thomas Bike, Dominic Damiano, Christian Bracero, Greg Salvador, and Brian Barad. as we have the full four deep sports star crew as we give you Division I basketball between the visiting Brockton Boxers of Brockton High School and the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Your thoughts, Tommy? We got a couple good interviews. You heard a lot of it. What are your thoughts before tip-off? I mean, we've already come into this uh, like game already knowing this is going to be one of the biggest matchups that uh, Bridgewater is going to have this season. Uh, when you take a look at both of these teams, they're very high talented. They have a lot of uh, ability and determination on both sides. I think that's going to be an all-around phenomenal game. I'm just curious how, um, you know, when we talk about the past games that uh, BR has had, a lot of issues that they've been uh, featuring has been uh, kind of like, you know, updating and trying to like, uh, just trying to keep up with the team. And, you know, most of the time they do a great job with it, but, you know, it's that transition that really can be, um, you know, kind of a critical point for uh, in Brockton's favor. So I'm kind of curious how they're going to kind of keep the game going and see what's going to happen afterwards. All right, with that being said, we will turn it over to the public address announcer, followed by the national anthem just before a tip-off. And uh, one thing we could say, we don't have a wet floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a little bit of a oh, that, Debbie Downer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well put. I mean, a full capacity crowd here at the, uh, here in the gymnasium here at, uh, excuse me, Bridgewater Raynham. But uh, one thing, uh, we got a program note. We picked up three more games. Uh, the remake of the game, we, uh, the crew we covered as far as Bridgewater Raynham basketball goes was uh, the remake is Wednesday at 4.30. I'm referring to the Dartmouth Indians game that got postponed, like you said, Debbie Downer. We picked up the Taunton Middle School uh, um, City Boys and Girls Bass champ uh, Championship. I'll get it out sooner, <laughs> sooner or later. I'm already thinking of the next thought. You know me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the next one is uh, Bristol Plymouth Hockey over in Rain, and we picked up two of their games. And they're on a great, they're on a great streak. They're, they're currently 11-3, and three, so... We're going to be picking up the uh, their game against Greater Bedford Folk, and of course their game against Good evening, uh, ladies Diamond. and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's MIAA varsity basketball game between the Brockton Boxers and the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans. First, with tonight's starting lineup, we have the Brockton Boxers, coached by Robert Bowen. Number twelve, senior Marcus Azor. Number thirteen, senior. Jerice Harris. Number 15, senior Abu Kaba. Number 24, senior Jalen Lee. And number 35, junior Sonny Okanola. And now for the starting lineup of the Bridgewater Raynham Trojans, coached by Doug Alex. Number three, junior Connor Rubenskis. 
Number 11, Senior Darius Hippolyte. Number 43, Senior Tony Fernandes. Number 21, Senior Sam Brown. And number 12, Senior Doug Alves. And now we ask that you please rise for the playing of our national anthem. All right, and there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, stand by for Bridgewater Arena Basketball. Boys basketball again. I'm happy to be joined by Thomas Pike, Greg Salvador, Christian Brasero, and Brian Barad doing our directing up in the Crow's Nest as we have a full four deep sports talk crew on this Division I matchup again between the Brockton Boxers of Brockton High School and, of course, the Bridgewater Arena Trojans. Should be a great game, Tom. No, I can, I, like you said, I can't wait for this one. We've been talking about this one for at least, you know, about a month now. Yeah, at least, yeah. And, you know, it's been on our minds the entire time. Every time we come over to uh, Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School, this has been like the one game we consistently talk about. Uh, both these teams in high tier in the division. So we're going to, you know, it's going to be a great game regardless. And can't wait to see what's going to happen. All right, so here we go. And we are underway, one by Fernandez. Quick break over to Sam Brown. Tried to field from Bunkus, but he lost the ball. So just like that, we have a change of possession. On, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, I was just gonna say, PR really bringing the enthusiasm already. Sam Brown trying to pass it over to uh, Connor Bunskis, but uh, just a little too hard on the push. Azor, that's over to Harris. Harris now kicks it back over to Lee Lee. To Kuba. Kuba's shot. Tried to get the big man Okanola. Okanola. Fernandez with a nice block, but didn't finish, couldn't finish the play. Now driving and coming up and ending up a little bit too fast. And almost basically blocked his own shot. Got himself right in the ring. There's a quick break. Fernandez now over to Bunkus or Bunkus. Doug Alves. Just underway, we'd like to welcome everybody watching on for, on Facebook Live. Come on, Darius. Come on, Fernandez Darius. Fernandez was thinking about Rumbunkus, saw a Hippolyte. Back to Alves. Alves, he's governed by Azor. Eight, Eight seconds Six. left. Six, Six seconds left. Hippolyte has to get one off. Sam Brown's going to try to drive. Gets it off. And in. Talk about using the shot clock to get the last second. There's a steal by Hippolyte on the inbound. Hippolyte now for three. That won't go. Rebound Brockton. Kuba now. He's going to try to block by Sam Brown. Kuba couldn't finish. Here come Doug Elves. Stops. Lost the ball. What did he hit? They're going to say it was out on Brockton. They're going to say, all right, the referee helped out. That we could definitely saw that from there. They're initially going to give it uh, Brockton's ball. Yeah, I mean, like, um, I kind of see where he was going from because it kind of looked like uh, from his ankle that it kind of was last touched by Doug Owls. But in all reality, though, it was last touched by uh, Marcus Azor. And it was just, it was a good move overall by Doug Owls. He went for the net. He tried to draw the foul, but nonetheless, he was going to go for the three. 
Long three miss, rebound Finez, Hippolyte for three. I mean, for the last couple of weeks, all you heard is about how Bridgewater and Raynham lost to the Brockton Boxes by seven at the Fieldhouse in Brockton. Now going baseline off the glass, can't finish rebound uh, Bridgewater and Raynham Brown. Now this Doug Elves bringing it up. Elves over to Rumbunkus. Baseline corner shot, won't go on the final left of Sam Brown. That was a risky move by, originally by Rabunskis, uh, trying to, uh, actually leading away from his defender and uh, kind of going in trying to get the seal, but almost exactly what happened right there. Trying to get out of the hands of uh, Cabo, but. 32, 32. Cooper, Cooper now with a nice drive there, that last shot for Brockton. There's Alves, gets it all the way up to Rabunskis. Sam Brown wasn't expecting that pass. Almost got his pocket pick, he pivoted. Lombunkis now looking, looking, pivoting. Eight go, seconds go, go. left. Fernandez all the way to Doug Owls for three. Won't go. Yes, oh, almost had an offensive rebound there. Yeah. Good job by Sam Brown being right underneath the keep multiple times, making sure that the ball was only going to get the hands back into the Trojans. But uh, it's kind of hard going up for a back end rebound like that and trying to keep it in bounds. All right, now Brockton in the BRN, 4.54 left in this first quarter, 7-2. Driving, not finishing, rebound. Fernandez, he moves, gets it up to Doug Alves. Now he's going to grab himself off the glass, kicks it back oh, out to Hippolyte, who saves it. Rumbunkus now, little flaw to the Good move by Doug Alves. I'm surprised he didn't go for the finisher, but ends up going off the outside to Hippolyte. Hippolyte with a good pass over to Rabunskis. Couldn't ask for a better positioning. Absolutely. Now driving from Brockton, lost the ball. That was Lee. He, he got it back, gets it up to Kuba. Kuba now tries to go inside of Okanola. Okanola, his hook shot won't go. Rebound Rabunskis. Approaching the four minute mark of the first quarter, 9-2. Bridgewater Raynham. I love the enthusiasm the Trojans have been bringing to the table right now. Brockton's really, you know, having a tough time in the first uh, four minutes of play here. Doug Alves, little baseline shot by <laughs> Now Brockton. Lee. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Oh boy, here we go, all the way out. Good. Fernandez from Bunkus. Back out to Fernandez. You take a quick shot, won't go. Rebound Brock. 323 and running. Here in the first quarter, 11 4. Trojans takes it back out. There's Lou. Stop. Gets back. Long call. Rebound. There's a lot of random. 11 4. Approaching Pin, three minutes left Pin, in the first quarter. Pin. Thomas Pike, Dominic Damian, and the rest goal. of the 4D Sports crew. Now Rubunkus over to Hippolyte. Hippolyte. Elves from Ball. the baseline. Won't go. Rebound Back. lead. Back. Now Brockton. They're going to try to push it. Going all by himself. A little hook shot up the glass. Won't go. Gets it on rebound. That was Azor, but finally taken by the Trump. That was a great job by Arizor, uh, going after the nice little hook shot, trying to go coast to coast, but initially afterwards, good rebound, nice reshot there, going up for, now it's only differential, five points for uh, the boxers. There's a baseline shot by Rabunkus, won't go, rebound Azor, quick pass, up the lead, and try to drive off the glass, and easily knocks it off the window. 11-8 with two minutes and 15 seconds in the running left in this first quarter. I am actually really surprised there hasn't been any turnovers or fouls so far. Um, this, you know, you normally you see that often, uh, in the, especially in this division, especially with these high-tier teams. But a lot of no calls, a couple uh, double dribbles that weren't actually called by uh, boxes, and uh, there was actually an, uh, an issue with. Uh, I think it was Doug Owls at one point. We almost he almost didn't cross over the half court in five seconds. This shot by Okanola, that rebound Bridgewater Rain. In comes Doug Alves. Oh. Okay, Fernandez, Fernandez, 
Pivoting, little hook Good. shot, won't go, yeah. fall short, cannot get it over Lee, rebound Brockman. Now Lee, he gets, he gets fouled in the act of shooting, so here's our, here's our first foul of the day. <laughs> right, we usually see that a little bit sooner. And it looks like they're gonna, it looks like uh, Rosario's checking in. Lee will uh, shoot a pair, hits the first. Couple guys getting winded here. Even Brockton's getting a couple fresh bodies. I mean, that was seven and a half minutes. Of, well, six and a half minutes of straight play and no stoppage like at all. Of yeah. Second shot hits the ball. Talk about suicide, like uh, the suicides uh, that you always have to do in practice. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Just continuous. All right. So here we go. One twenty-five. Officially left in this first quarter. Thirteen ten. Trojans. Lombunkus. Rosario has checked in. And so has uh, number 44. That's Atkins, Atkins now. Quick little shot. Won't go. Rebound. Finally. Brockton finally gets that rebound. Approaching the minute mark. Left in the first quarter. I'll tell you the Brockton stops in a minute. Oh, nice jump by Hippolyte. Hippolyte for Rosario. They lost composure. You gotta regroup, oh, and he throws it away. <laughs> and uh, now he's stopped by Hippolyte. What a great job on that back pursuit, man. Unbelievable, good job by that young man. Yeah, I mean, I have to give a lot of credit over to Kaba, though, to get that initial interception. Uh, Hippolyte literally only saw Rosario and just passed it over to him. Good steal on his part, but even better job by Hippolyte, literally swatting the ball and nothing but ball. As up, uh, went out of bounds, and now leaving the box is 20 seconds of the shot clock. All right, here we go. 40 seconds left in this first half. 17 seconds on the shot clock, out of bounds. It will be Trojan's ball. At the end of the first quarter, we're going to get us uh, sideline reporters to give us their impression of, you know, what they've seen. We get 37 seconds left, and I'm referring to Craig Salvador and Christian Bracero. Rombunkus, Rosario now, as he's being checked by Reed. Rumbunkus shot, won't go. Rebound on the floor. Let's see what they got. It's gonna be Rosario. He's gonna try to drive, kicks it out to number four from the corner, won't go. That was Feeney. Rocking now 10 seconds, trying to get the last shot off before the quarter. He's gonna drive, Reed's gonna drive, but he's fouled. And he can make. He has a chance to tie this game up before that, before the end of the first quarter. Yeah, it was a great job by Reed, though. I like the way he was able to kind of drive baseline right into the net. You know, go off the, uh, go off the shot, and as well as get the first uh, foul off of Robunskis. Try and tie it up, but now it's going to be closed off. All right, one shot, Feeney now. Corner hits. <laughs> <laughs> Bad what a shot by number 33, Jack Armstrong. What a way to end the first quarter, guys. Your thoughts after one quarter? You know, I was a little nervous for Brockton because they were facing some terms to begin with. They were down like 7 0. And I'm looking over at Coach Bowen. He seems calm, composed, almost like that Coach Popovich of uh, the Spurs. They, they, yeah. They, they, they take it very. You know, settled, and then they just came back, and then the Trojans aren't out of it. Obviously, they're trying to one up each other, and they're just very intense game so far. It really, really is. I don't know about you, Craig. Yeah, the Trojans right at the gates. They were very hot right at the gates. They were scoring, they were outscoring their opponent. I think it was like nine to two, eleven to two at some point. So they were doing a really good job right at the gates. And the thing I was really impressed with the Trojans was. They give up a little bit of height against this Brockton team. This Brockton team does kind of beat them in height, but at the very beginning, the Trojans were really winning on the rebounds. They were winning on the offensive and defensive boards, and the Trojans had a really good ability to finish on the other end. So um, a, mixture, a good mixture of offense and defense really helped this Trojans team right out the gate, and they're looking for a big second half to continue their lead. All right, so there we go. As we get ready to start the second quarter, thank you, Craig, and thank you, Christian, and we'll hear from them at the half. At the beginning of the half, all right, inbound there's Reed. Reed gets over to Montero Jr., who's also the quarterback for Brockton High. Reed 
Pivoting, getting double team. He lost the ball. Oh, and Atkins almost had a steal in the corner of the baseline. We do. We have a change of possession and one off free. So it'll be VR ball as far as our angle. <laughs> yeah. You know? All right, it goes Hippolyte now. The lead is four as we start this second quarter, 16 to 12. BR, nice play by Brockton. Has getting it hand in there with Lewis Charles. That now a, Rosario. That was a weird way of getting Hippolyte away from his defender. He kind of used his back foot to kind of like, you know, pivot his way out. Good job by using, by not using the pivot foot, but nonetheless, though, Brockton struggling right now. Looks like they got a nice little up for a three, and they get it. Yeah, the number 22 hit that, Lewis Charles. The lead is one, 16 to 15. Approaching the seven minute mark left in this first half. Hippolyte gets it over to Aikens. Aikens now. Aikens over to Feeney. Now Armstrong, he's gonna try to drive, but kicks it back out to Atkins. Rosario's a look, off the rim won't go. It will be. It's going to be B.I. Ball. It, it, yeah, it actually bounced off of uh, Naven Reed. And he almost, it was kind of like one of those awkward like um, positionings from the front rim where it just bounced off right off his uh, hand. And initial reaction, bounced off his hand. Couldn't get a complete grasp of it. So back over to B.R. And now Doug Owls with it. And there's Armstrong from the corner. He hit one before the end of the first half. Rebound Brockton. There's Montero Jr. He gets it over to the big guy, Reed. Reed's gonna try to drive, he loses the ball. They're gonna say he lost that all by himself. He wasn't touched, so we'll have an inbound ball. In the BR end, here comes the BR, and they're walking, Brockton's walking back on defense. That's not a Brockton team, you know, you're used to seeing in uh, high school basketball. Now Doug Howe's gonna try to drive, kicks it back out. There's Feeney, oh, nice pass inside, <laughs> but he's fouled. No one saw Aikens, I thought. I think no one saw him under the hoop. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was a great move to start things off with Doug Owls. It was a good pass over to uh, Shane Feeney, and Shane Feeney drawing the entire Brockton uh, team just over to his side, and no one even saw um, uh, Carl Atkins right in front of the net. And beautiful pass, and goes up. Now he's at the charity stripe. All right, so here we go. Hits the first one. The lead is two now for Bridgewater Random. 17-15, officially six minutes and 16 seconds left in this first half. Hits that one, misses that one, excuse me, rebound Brockton. All the way up back to, back to Azor, Azor now, Azor gets it over Lewis Charles, Charles tries to drive, gets himself too far around, but then he's unable to get his own rebound and finish. Lewis Charles is actually the only person on the Brockton team right now who's scored so far in the second quarter. He has five so far. Armstrong, Dauphine, he had a look baseline. He's going to give it back up and step in front of that. Is Azo, he's going to finish. Almost tried to slam it home, but he softly put it over the rim and in. Yeah, it's kind of hard at 5'9". Yeah. But still, nonetheless, the guy does have some, uh, does have, a, have some wings on him, though. Yeah, he does. Doug Al's lost the ball, tried to play it off a player, recovered by Brock, and it comes Azo now. Baseline is Darius. Darius kicks it back out to Lewis Charles. Now on the other side. The big guy is Terry. Azor covered by Atkins. Atkins now gets it back over to Lewis Charles. To Darius. Darius thinking about driving. He has a little floater off the glass. Won't go. Rebound Brockton. Now a follow-up. That won't go. Under the hoop and working and working for that was Terry. Eldon Terry, 21-17 Brockton now. A four point lead with 4.41 left in this first half. Doug Elves. Time out, time out. Time out, time out. Bridgewater Rain and we'll step away. You're watching high school basketball. We'll be back with more right after this.
Everybody, welcome back. Dominic Damiano, Thomas Pike, Christian Basiro, Craig Salvador, and Brian Barada as we come out of this break with a 21-17 Brockton lead and 4.36, 4 minutes and 36 seconds left in this first half. Your thoughts, Tommy? It's, it's going to be tough, though, for um, BR. I mean, they were doing a great job in the first quarter, but it's hard, though, to keep the uh, mentality and the you know aggressiveness um, consistently. I mean, that's what we kind of talked about um, at the beginning for the pregame, is that it's hard to go against this Boxers team and really maintain the pace the entire way. Brockton's been very sneaky the second quarter. They've been able to kind of... Uh, keep up the points, and right now they're up by uh, nine. And so far, uh, BR has only made one point so far in the second uh, quarter. All right, now off the rep, they're in the Brockton end as Rakin's trying to go. We're going to have a change of possession on the shot clock, so it'll be Brockton ball. Now down to 414 left, and a four point Brockton lead, 21 17 in this first half. Now bringing up for Brockton is A's, always covered by Hippolyte. Hippolyte. Now over to Lee. Lee trying to feed it inside to the big man, Terry. Terry uses the glass and uses his height and goes right around Sam Brown. Under four minutes left in this first half. Now 23 to 17, Brockton. The lead is six. From Bunkus over to Hippolyte. He uses the pick that Sam Brown says. Gets a look for three. Off the rim, won't go. Rebound Brockton as Terry brought that down for Brockton High. Now here comes Azores, covered by Doug Alves. Trying to work it inside, losing the ball and covered by, they're on the floor turning a little bit of a wrestling match, it was Hippolyte and initially it was uh, Darty Glenn that lost possession of the ball. You know what I saw? I saw him trying to do something before he hit the ball. He was, he was already looking where he wanted to throw the ball, pass the ball, excuse me. Yeah, I saw the same thing too. It was one of those situations where he's, you know, he was thinking faster than he was actually reacting and that's when mistakes do happen either it bounces off your foot or something like that or exactly what happened and was, that was actually a good opportunity right there by uh, Doug Owls but unfortunately that didn't go in either all right so still we, we're here pushing three minute mark three minutes left in this first half 23 to 7 Brock and that should have been a travel right that should have been a travel yeah that was slept. actually the, that was actually the second time that's happened yeah not like slipping and falling, but right. Like, I know. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I just want to make sure. I'm, you know me. I want to make sure I'm not losing my mind. That looked like a travel. <laughs> no, it me. was. It was definitely a travel. All right. So they stopped the play and they give the ball back to Brockton. So that travel isn't called. Now with the ball, that's Okanola who played the beginning of the first, and he's going to try to do his float, his hook shot won't go. Rebound. Bridgewater Rainham. Two forty-five left in this first half. Nice. Nice uh, skills there by Doug Elves from Bunkus, and he's he's covered by Lee. Going to try to drive baseline, finish off the glass, and he has a chance to make, finish, make this a three-point play. Nice patience because these Brockton guys, they are quick, and you have to almost you have to get them guessing before you can make your sec, you know, your initial move. Exactly. And he finishes a three-point play, 23 to 20, Brockton with 2.34 left in this first half. Brockton bringing up this Okanola. Okanola over to Azor. Azor now back to Okanola. Hip leg guarding him. He gets it all the way over to Lee. Thinking shooting baseline won't go. And that was Rebound. another travel. Uh, that should have been another call right there. That was the third time that's happened so far. Yep. There's got to be some order in the game because in my opinion, when they, um, when, <laughs> when you go to the playoffs, and, and you know we'll get their opinion in a minute. You're not gonna. They're not gonna allow that. No, no, they're not. I was actually surprised they've been calling. They like, haven't called it at all tonight. And that was like the third or fourth time it's happened. All right, now Doug Alves all the way to Rumbunkus. He's gonna try to drive baseline, hits the rim, and basically gets stops himself from finishing it. But then again, you got a very good player on you. Yeah, and two number, actually. Yeah, two. Marcus a uh, zero, number twelve. And Eldon Terry, number 31. Yeah, all over him. There's a shot by Hippolyte for three and hits. We have a tie game with under two minutes left. 23-23. Now Azor, there's a corner shot, baseline shot, won't go rebound. Ocalone, he's going to try to finish, and he gets it in two. I'm not going to lie, I love the idea that Brockton Boxers have. What they do is... 
uh, they have almost like um, a spread out offense. If you notice, what they'll end up doing is they won't really uh, go for a fast break, but what they'll do is they'll have half the team, about three players, run to the other side, and they'll just pass around and try to make the uh, defense work and try to make the Trojans work as hard as possible. And once they get that opportunity, they'll a nice little room of separation. They just pass it out. The two um, top guys just drive right in, make some cuts, and you're good to go. And it's crazy how well it's been working so far tonight. So Okanola could not finish the three-point play. Three-point play, 25-23. Brockton, now after that layup didn't fall, here comes Brockton again under the hoop, trying to kick it back out. Based on little 10-footer hits as Jacelyn Lee lets one go under tw a minute 20 left, 27-23. Brockton. We'd like to welcome everybody listening on, watching and listening on Facebook Live. Feeds inside and Fernandez a little bit too mustard to Hippolyte is probably the right way to say it because he really threw that ball but Hippolyte was there just miscommunication on a nice inside pass. But with that being said it's Brockton ball now approaching a minute left in this first half. Again 27-23 Brockton inside. Okalona trying to finish the play. Fernandez almost had him. Now he's going to go the other way with a little floater and hits. 29 to 23. And that's the separation once again that Brockton's been doing. It's been successful all night. And the other thing too that they've been doing good at is the second chance points. So far that was a 6-1 tonight and it's been extremely helpful for them. There's a long shot. Hippolyte hits three. Timeout. Timeout, Bridgewater, Raynham, 29-26 with 30 seconds left, 36 seconds left. We'll step away. We'll be right back with more right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back. Dominic Damiano, Thomas Pike, Craig Salvador, Christian Bracero, and the master of the camera himself, Brian Barad, and the rest of the four deep sports talk crew. We come out of this break, 29-26. Tom, 36 seconds left, your, your thoughts. Well, Brockton has the ball. I, I think they should just keep on going on top. I mean, right now they're doing so well with keeping up with the separation, you know, BR is really pressuring that full court press and their boxes are just taking advantage of that and they're really just making sure that they're drawing the uh, defense, get create that separation and they just keep on passing to each other. I mean, uh, Ukunloa is like one of the uh, biggest uh, contenders for him. You can see the separation there. Now he's like completely by himself. And there you go. That's all they've been doing. Oh, there's another shot. It can't follow Ukunloa. He's gonna call a foul. They're gonna get it on Sam Brown. But you know what I liked about that? Last possession by Brockton under the hope as far as B.I.'s defense goes. They made him try to earn that shot. Not that, but, and then again, Okanola is not afraid to use his God-given <laughs> big frame and push anybody out of the way. I'd be doing the same thing. Hits the first one, 30 to 26. Officially 13, if you want to be official, official, 13 points, 9 tenths of a second left in this first half. Okanola hit the first one. M misses the second. Oh, a nice hustle by Brockton. And there's Lee with the rebound. They're going to try to get one more shot off. Lee's going to drive, feeds it in. We're going to have an offensive foul as take as Atkins takes it hard. That's going to be on Akuba, his first team third. With five tenths of a second, he's going to try to get one more shot off. There's a shot. And it won't go, but before we, before we step away and we come back to you guys at the half, let's get your thoughts real fast. First off, when it comes to the two big men of the boxes, uh, I believe uh, Okanola, if I pronounce his name right, and Eldon Terry, they are grabbing the boards. They are huge. I mean, I'm a tiny dude, but they are huge, and they're doing a lot of work. Um, offensively, second chance points. I noticed that as well for Brockton. Um, very key offensively for Brockton, and they're just too fast. 
way too fast. What about you, Craig? Yeah, Bridgewater, uh, my and Bridgewater ran him. They started out with an early lead, but Brockton really showed a lot of resiliency, you know, coming back uh, and taking the lead at half. It's still a close game. It's only a two-possession game. Bridgewater ran him was only down by four, and if you saw in the first quarter, they actually missed uh, their point guard, Doug Al uh, Doug Alves, for a little bit. He was uh, stretching on the sidelines for a bit, uh, first part of the or second part of the first half. So him coming back into the second half would be uh, again big for them. But this game is nowhere near over yet. They still got a whole nother half, and it's a very close game. So I'm expecting a lot more close basketball going into the second half. All right, we'll step away. We'll be back with second half action right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bro uh, excuse me, almost said Broughton High School, Bridgewater, Raynham High School, Thomas Pike, I'm Dominic Damiano. With that being said, I will turn it over to uh, Christian Brasario and Doug Alves. Hey everybody, so basically my insight uh, so far from what I've watched in the first half of the game, first off, great game so far, great games, everything's closed in, when it comes to Brockton, um, during timeouts, they're very calm, very calm. Uh, even at the very beginning the game when they were struggling, uh, they just kept it calm and obviously they had the lead right, right now, uh, but they're closing the staying in there. Um, offensively, they're very fast. And I think that uh, some of the big men on the team that are grabbing on board, second chance points, are uh, very key, like I mentioned before. Um, but they're passing it very fast, great communication offensively. Defensively, they're like snakes. They're just right around the corner of, of BR. But uh, BR, yeah, a few turnovers. Yeah, thanks, Christian. Yeah, the Trojans were really hot out of the gate, especially in the first quarter. They came out of there, they were outscoring their opponents left and right. It was like, it was, I think, 11 or 2 at some point, or 9 to 2 at some point. And they were really playing bigger than they actually are. I think they're, they're outsized really by this Brockton team. And they were grabbing reboard, uh, rebounds at the very beginning, really uh, out-rebounding um, Brockton the boxes. I was kind of surprised at that. But, um, again, Brockton is a very resilient team. They're, un they're undefeated for a reason. But, again, this game, it's so close right now. It's only a two-possession game. We're going into the other uh, next half. Only down by four points. So I'm, de I'm definitely confident the Trojans are going to come back and definitely make a game out of this. So that's my two cents on it. He turned his mic off. Hmm? All right, that was uh, Christian Bracero and uh, and uh, Craig Salvador, and we have to uh, we have to work on his mechanical ability to keep his mic on because uh, we're not picking up his mic not at all. But yeah. it could be a glitch. But here we are at the half. We got a minute before we start the second half. That's Tom. definitely something that's got to oh, be in Dio's go. mind. But anyway, so that's going to be it for us. So back to you, Dom. All right, thanks, guys. And uh, great halftime um, show. We'll, let's, we'll have to work on his. Uh, we're going to have to work on his mic ability there. You need some more training. But I'm closer picking on Christian Bracero. But uh, what do you got? What do you got as far as scores and uh, how we looking? Uh, so right now, uh, BR's uh, leading point contender is uh, Darius uh, Hippolyte. He so far has 11 points. Uh, he had last quarter uh, six points, and the quarter before he had five. And over on the other side for the boxers, uh, Sagan uh, Ukunloa. He has uh, seven points so far, and he's actually the funny thing about uh, the boxers is that a majority of the team, a lot of the starters initially as well as some of the bench players, they all have pretty much the same kind of uh, criteria when it comes to point status right now. Still early in this game, still got another half uh, ball to play, but uh, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm curious to see how well the box is gonna keep up the pace. One big thing that they've been killing it at right now is the second chance points. Last quarter, they got six points out of the total of uh, 18 that they had, and a lot of it is thanks to actually uh, Ukunloa himself as well as uh, Lewis Charles. A lot of these shots that uh, they keep on going up with have been basically untouched, and I love the status of their opposition. They've been doing a great job separating the defense for BR and really make, making sure that the, they're really giving the man coverage a lot of uh, a lot of tough situations. All right, so we're on the way here in the second half. Again, 26 to 30. First possession goes to Bridgewater Rain, and that's Brown. Sam Brown in the game. He's covered by Lee. He's going to try to drive. And that's close. That's knocked from, from behind him as Kuba made a great play, and right there to take that block was League. Now it comes up Brockton. There's Azor. He's going to try. 
He looks like he lost the ball. I think it's gonna stay Brockton ball in in the BR end. So right now we have Ukunloa driving in, bounces back out. Now we have Koba with it. He's at the top of the key. So let's see what a Koba does. 7-16, just underway here, and there's Okalona. He gets followed by Fernandez. No, they're gonna call that on Hippolyte as we first foul here in this first, in the, excuse me, in the second half. His first team first will have an inbound pass right under the BR end. Okalona on Fernandez, there's two big men going out. He'll kick it out all the way to Reed. Baseline shot, hits as Harris, Jerase Harris, we haven't seen much of him in the first half. He comes in and hits a nice baseline shot. Yeah, no one was covering him. I think uh, the person that was supposed to be covering was uh, Hippolyte, but he was actually trying to double team, um, I believe it was Ukunloa because he's just been killing it right underneath uh, the net, but yeah, that's one of the situations you have to keep on like, you know, moving around. You have to keep on, uh, you have to look around. That's the big thing. Rumbunkis sees a three clean look, almost stolen, and now comes Brockton on a fast break. There's a rebound on Bunkers, gets out of Sammy Brown, nice pass, he kicks it back over to Hippolyte, can't finish. And there's Azor. Azor gets it over to Harris, Harris another look, hits for two. The lead is nine now for Brock, and the fast break here, Sam Brown. Nice finish, can't finish. I'm sorry, I had a nice try, just couldn't finish. He's double teamed. It loses control of the ball, finally taken by Okalona. He's gonna try to get off to Lee. Lee can't get it, he's blocked by Rumbunkus. Rebound, BR, a little action going on under the hoop. And BR ends up in possession of the ball after all said and done. Under six minutes left, officially 5.49 left here in the third quarter. So far, great defense is showcased by both teams, but the opposition's what's really been breaking the case for both of them as well. You know, Brockton's just having those nice clean looks for threes, and a big case is actually given over to uh, Jairus Harris. Now on the rebound, re Kuba. Kuba now. Do it off the read. And then he says, Okalona, they're going to have an offensive foul. Harris took, uh, Fernandez just took one. From the tiniest guy on the boxers. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was saying. That's exactly, you finished my point, thank you. <laughs> All right, so in comes Doug Alves, bringing it up offensively now. 35-26, Brockton. I think that was a great move by Fernandez overall. Really it just was. killing the entire play and giving uh, the ball back over to the Trojans. Huge, huge good play by uh, Fernandez on the defensive side. Doug Alves uses the pick, now he's gonna drive by himself, kicks off to Rumbunkus, Rumbunkus baseline, little floater. In won't go, rebound Sam Brown, kicks over to Hippolyte, driving, lost the ball. That gets tipped by Reed, and a Ooh. great job by Doug Alves stopping that play. And there's Hippolyte from the baseline, and hits a three. Back and forth. I thought that was the New England Patriots game. Yeah, again. that's exactly what I was thinking too. Exact same situation, we're blocking it to end it for, uh, end it for the Patriots game <laughs> this past Sunday, but Doug Alves pretty much bringing it alive again. Beautiful end cap by uh, Hippolyte as well for three. Kuba for a shot won't go. Rebound. Fernandez. Here comes Bridgewater in. Doug Al's on a quick break. And got a foul there. It's going to be a number 35. Okalona. His first team second. Officially 420 left in this third quarter. At the end of the third, we're going to hear from Do we're going to hear from Craig Salvador and Christian Bracero on their take after three quarters of play. On the inbound pass, hey Tony Fernandez with a little 12, little eight footer. 35-31. Now on the fast break, there's a baseline shot for Brockton, and he lets one go as Lewis Charles lets everybody know he's back in the game. Approaching the four-minute mark left in this third quarter. The lead is seven, 38-31. Hippolyte, guarded, guarded by Harris. Gets it over to Doug Alves. Alves guarded by Montero Jr. Back to the top of the key, won't go. Rebound, tipped, and finally recovered by the 
Doc Alves, and Rambankas uses his small frame and man able to get possession on uh, position under the hoop and knock it off the glass. The lead is five. Rebound Brockton and trying to go up and finish, and he does is Kuba, but not before number 21. Uh, Doherty Glenn, who uh, made a great pass. This is a tip. This ball is all over the place. In down pass. Great recovery there by Hippolyte. You know what? This ref is really letting a lot of stuff yeah, go. I was thinking the exact same thing, too. But he's going to call that one for some reason. Because not for nothing, as much as we love Darius Hippolyte, he basically, he oh, basically yeah, no, tackled he, him almost. Yeah, yeah, no, he literally just threw him to the ground and still got the ball back. Right. I'm, I'm really surprised about that one. All right, so it'll be Brockton possession. I'll play full court press. I, th I think this is actually just a recovery foul on that one, to be honest. It could have it, been. It was just one of those things where it's like, you I, know what, like, but I did mess up there. I should just give him back to the, um, the boxers. I'm, I'm scratching my head, Tom. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, what's going on? Inbound pass. We're going to have a foul on Tony Fernandez, 4-3. His third, team third. Yeah, that's that's big. If uh, they lose uh, Fernandez, that's a big critical part. So they're going to bring out Atkins. Yeah. All right, so on the inbound pass. Nice play by Rumbunkus. Tips it to Sam Brown. And now in the game is number 13 for, and that's Mark Willis. Willis now approaching 240 left in the third quarter, driving, looking, pivoting. Gets it over to Hippolyte, dangerous though. Yeah, that was uh, kind of a little overdone, but Hippolyte still makes it happen. What a nice look and a nice play by Sam Brown, setting that clear look so uh, Hippolyte could let it go. 2.23 left, the lead is two. 40 to 38 left in this third quarter. Hippolyte's on fire so far. He's go. 20, no, am I reading this right? Does that say 21? No. It, you could be right. He has been on fire. He has been hitting them. Excuse 19. Me. That's all right. That's incredible. Yeah, actually half the points uh, tonight is by Hippolyte. All right, officially two minutes left in this third quarter. Lead is two for Brock and 40-30. Willis over to Mbunkus. He's going to drive, use his big frame, kicks out to Sam Brown, who I thought was going to shoot this. Hippolyte for a look. Off the rim, won't go. Rebound Willis. Bounce pass, now when Bunk is thinking about driving, lost the ball. Rebound. Doherty Glenn, but now he gets it up to the point guard just like that in transition. Here comes Brockton, driving, little floater. I'm Won't surprised go. it's not a travel, I, I really am. It's a, I mean, that was a great job right there by the boxes, but I am just thoroughly surprised that there was no call for a travel on that one. All right, now Hippolyte. He's going to try to drive the lead. It's four off the glass. Can't finish, but there's Atkins. He's blocked, but he's going to go up for a couple. 121 officially left in this third quarter. And like I said, Tom, uh, Tom will hear from Craig Salvador and Christian Bracero on their takes on the game. So Atkins will shoot a couple. He has a chance to make this a two-point game. Hits the first. Now checking in for Brockton is the big man, Terry. And let me see, it looks like uh, Montero Jr., Jose Montero Jr. just checked in. Oh, misses the second on the rebound. What do we got? No call. Little, <laughs> A little weird thing going on with the shot clock. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> the shot clock one, yeah. And off the glass, nice move. For two, 44-39, approaching a minute left in this third quarter. Doug Alves now back in the game, covered by Montario Jr. He gets a pick off Atkins, gonna feed him inside. Rumbunkus over to Willis. Willis now trying to go, <laughs> that's a big challenge right there. I'd kick that back uh, out. That's a, miss, that's a mismatch. mismatch. Yeah, Doug Alves, nice look inside. Atkins moves, off to him, won't go, tipped. Recovered by Brockton. 37 seconds left. Now on the drive, a little floater off the glass by Reed. 
46, the lead is seven now, back up to seven. With 20 seconds left is the last, this should be the last shot of this third quarter. So far no one's moving on either side. No. There's Willis, see if he looks in, pivots, pivots from Bunkus, drives baseline, little floater, hits. And that will do it, that will end the third quarter with your score. Brockton 46. I want to make sure I get their mics up this time. There we go. Brockton 46, Bridgewater, Raynham 41. You guys, your thoughts, I mean, just not just, not just, uh, you know, you guys have been doing both jobs, covering both benches, but just overall, uh, you know, just overall, what do you guys think of the game so far? It's a very close game right now. Still only two possessions, five-point game. I think the player for Bridgewater really to talk about, it's uh, Dar it's um, Darius Hippolyte. He's been going off this game. He's shooting very well from beyond the arc. He's playing good defense, grabbing boards. He's just doing it all, and I think he's he's been a beast so far for Bridgewater Random. So I think he's really the talk for that team. What about you, Christian? What do you think about for Brockton? Well, let's go back to Hippolyte. He hit that big three that we, we know is right in the big man's face. One of the big man of the, the Brockton boxers. Definitely got showed out there, but uh, let's focus on number 15. Um, is your mic, did your mic just go off? Oh, it's low battery. I'll borrow his mic. Go ahead. Number 15, Abu Kaba. Uh, he's like the eye of the storm offensively uh, for Brock. And, uh, I've, I've noticed that they're trying to get him the ball as much as possible, and he's definitely making plays offensively for Brock. And back to you, Dom. All right, and thank Tom. you. Thanks, guys. Great job. Rebound BR as we start this fourth quarter. And we'll have a foul. And um, Sam Brown will shoot a couple. Sam Brown misses the first one. Forty six forty one just underway here in the fourth quarter. Hits the second. We have an update on Bristol Plymouth girls basketball. They double team him, trying to get the ball out of Reed's hand, but he's able to get it off. He gets it all the way over to Terry now. Reed again. Montero Jr. covered by Doug Alves. He's gonna try to drive. They're going to say it's going to stay. Brockton ball in the BRN. Tom, officially 7.22 left in this game in a four-point Brockton lead. That was almost like an uncanny steal by Doug Owls. I mean, it was it almost was. like it was just kind of natural for him just kind of reach out his hand, take it right back for him. Good for him. All right, here we go. Doug Owls tried to feed inside. That's tipped. Now he's thinking about it. He lost the ball. And that's Darity Glenn, he can't finish as Atkins comes by and uh, slows him up. <laughs> oh, and uh, Darity Glenn was mad, he was ready to finish. Yeah, you could tell the amount of frustration just came off of his face too. I mean, uh, the whole thing started from Doug Owls. He was trying to get trying to get a pass through his legs, but it was in a uh, touch by uh, Darity Glenn. And that next foul, that was on Terry. His first team six, guess what? Brockton is getting themselves in trouble now. One more and, and they go into the bonus. That was a nonchalant move by. Yeah. I mean, that was a great cover though by Atkins and now even back over again, it's gonna be a, going to be a good little move there and potentially a good opportunity for uh, the Trojans to get, you know, shorten this deficit. Only down by four right now. Only four. We'll have a recap with Greg Salvador and uh, Christian Bracero as you and I will wrap it up here. In, in pa inbound pass to Sam Brown, kicks it back out to Rumbunkus. The starters are back in. You see the, There's you, a shot by Rumbunkus. That's too much. Rebound 
Brockton. And his frustration on the box's face, as you could tell. I mean, I think the uh, ref was actually talking about it um, uh, to them personally, just saying, hey guys, yeah, knock it out. You know, it's a game right now, but you gotta keep it going. You gotta keep it casual, keep it classy. Lewis Charles just hit one for Brockton, 48-42. Six point game. Sam Brown gonna drive baseline, stops, pivots, pivots. Over to Hippolyte. Hippolyte for a long three and hits. Woo! God, he made that look easy. The lead is three, 48-45. Approaching the six minute mark left in this game. That's a six shot made from beyond the arc tonight. Reed lost the ball, gets it by Alves, tips. Yeah, that was, unfortunately that was off of, um, oh, they're gonna call it off of Brockton. They're gonna call it off of Brockton. And now we're gonna have a change. That's gonna be on number 10. That's gonna be on Montero Jr. And that's base, that's one and one. I, I, I'm not too sure about, I mean, I can understand exactly what happened. Like, you know, he lost. Yep, so, so they're going the one and one. This could work out for BR's advantage if they can get Brockton into trouble. All right, so Doug Owls will shoot one. He hits this one like everybody knows. He has a shot for a second one. Hits the first. The lead is two. That was actually Doug Owls' first point of the night. Really? Yeah. We've seen a lot of threes. He just hasn't got his rhythm down tonight. Yeah, but thank God for Hippolyte, though, for the Trojans, because he's been on fire from beyond the arc. Rebound Brock and Oklahoma. He's being double teamed, but there to watch his back was Reed number, excuse me, Azor number 12. Little give and go, that won't go. Baseline kicks it out, and that's blocked as Oklahoma tried to finish. Turnaround shot, that won't go, but on the follow up and a foul, nice follow by Reed. And he has a chance to make this a three point play. And in comes Tony Fernandez, he, the big man. He has three fouls so far, but he'll be taking on Atkins. But. You know, I like the defensive movement that BR was going to be doing, but once again, these second chance points are doing an absolute number here for the boxers. He hits, he finishes the three point play. 51 46, the lead is five for Brockton. Doug Alves, she's trying to go, trying, trying to go around Azor. Gets it over to Hippolyte. Hippolyte, he's getting double team, kicks it back out to Doug Alves. Rumbunkus. And there's Kuba on him. Rumbunkus pivoting, stops, kicks it back off the Doug Alves. Alves is going to try to drive with nine seconds. Off the glass and he's fouled. Oh, did he make that look easy? That was, you know what? I'm sorry. He made that look pretty, is what he did. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful floater from Doug Alves. Literally just crossed around from the far side, and, uh, actually from the near side, excuse me. Cuts right out and towards the middle, collapses the defense. Yep. But no one could actually keep up with his speed, and that's what you have to do. He had a chance to finish a three-point play. He does, 51 to 49. 5'10 officially left in the game. And the little floater off the glass won't go. Rebound, Okola, it's stolen by Rumbunkis, but he can't hold on to the ball. Yeah, the pressure right there from uh, Cabo was definitely present in Rumbunkis' face, and that's the kind of situation you can't need, especially with two points down. Now on the inbound, you're right, too, exactly. Sorry about that. Under five minutes left in the game, Tom. And uh, Brockton has been unstoppable on the offensive side. Another good look. Oh, I don't think they're gonna call possession now. It's gonna be. It should be on uh, the Trojans, I believe, right? Yeah, it should be yep. tro Trojans possession. Yep. All right, so here we go, two points. 51-49, deciding side this game as of right now, 437 in running. As far as time left in this fourth quarter, Sam Brown over to Fernandez. Fernandez looking the big man, thinking about getting his dodge from Bunkers, kicks it back up, that's tip, but Doug Alves is there. I was very fortunate for the Trojans that Doug Alves really sweep around and look at all the, <laughs> look at that. He really brought the entire force over to Doug Alves. He really did. Double team now, full court, half court press. There's a free look for Brockton. 
won't go. And they're going to say it was last touch by Sam Brown. So it will stay Brockton's ball in the BR end with officially 4.02 left in this game. And again, a 51 49 Brockton lead. On the inbound, there's Azor covered by Alves. Looking gets it all the way over to Kuba. Kuba now going to try to drive off the glass and does it again. Nice touch by that young man, 53 49. Driving baseline is Rumbunkus. Too much. There's a long break. They get it up to the big man who floats it right off, lays it off the glass. And Lewis Charles makes that look easy for Brockton. 55 49, lead of six now for the boxers. Hippolyte. I'm not sure if it's fatigue or what, but uh, the Trojans are definitely feeling it right now. Hippolyte, step back, grab that's blocked. That was just nasty. Kind of a foul, 35, it's a, be a technical. technical. I'm not too sure what the technical was, though, but... Yeah, they're going to tee him up, so it looks like Doug Alves is going to shoot a couple. And that's big for the Trojans. And then he's also going to shoot, he's going to shoot that. Then he's going to shoot, uh, oh. Now, he's, now I believe he has one more. Then he has the one and one right? Yes. And they just teed up Oklahoma. Hits that one. Now here comes the one and one. Timeout, timeout, Brockton. Hey guys, well let's why don't we get you guys in here? We just had our first uh, well our first tee of the game. Your thoughts uh, before we come out of this break. 55 50. Well, number 15, Marsh. Marcinell, uh, let me get his name right. Marcinell Lewis, or uh, Louis Charles. Yep. Um, blocks, pressure shots made. They give him the ball offensively. Um, I just know that it's a five point game. And if I was a Brockton boxer offensively, I would just keep drawing pressure, get to the line, and you know get that momentum up a little bit more to seal the game. How about you, Craig? Uh, from Bridgewater's uh, point of view, I think with them now they're in the bonus and they they're in the bonus right now. So if they make their free throws and get fouled, they're definitely not out of this. Only down by five. So that is where the big difference is right now. They still have a few fouls to give, and they can also they get, they take any fouls. They can again go to the line, get some free throws. So if they just play aggressively, try driving more than shooting, they can definitely come back and definitely pull out a lead in this. All right, thanks guys. Three sixteen left in this game. Again, 55-50, like Craig said, um, Rainham, uh, Bridgewater Rainham has a, a definitely good chance to go to the charity stripe if they can get Brockton in trouble. They've already got nine, pretty much next shot's gonna be the double bonus, next foul. Doug Alves. Yeah, I mean, if I were them, I would just keep on drawing the fouls. I mean, it's been working pretty well for them, and so far, it's been very successful so far this quarter as well. Alves thinking about driving, gets all the way from Bunk, it's now top of the key, Alves gonna drive. There's a shot. Off the glass and hits. Nice touch. 52 50. 55 52 with 250 left in the game and running. It's almost like scenic the way that uh, Doug Owls actually goes up for his floaters. It, it, he just like stays up there for a hot second and he just does like this nice little backhand shot. And they're going to get the travel on that one. And I this is the one call that they haven't been you know saying at all tonight. And now I'm surprised they actually starting to call it. I, I'm not even, I'm, you know what, after that last comp, oh, it was a brown finish. Oh, and he can't put it be fouled. My point was, after you and I discussed the last foul, my mind was, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even gonna try to diagnose these foul. These, <laughs> I mean, as far as the traveling, yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna diagnose the travel anymore, because I don't know what they're gonna call. And yeah. then we just see this, you know? So, I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, you can't really take two steps in between each dribble, especially like that. That, that, was, a, that was a long, Long, oh you know, yeah, inter like you know, intermission between dribbles. Uh, that last foul was on Jason Lee, number 24. His second team tenth has a chance to make it a two-point game, a one-point game, and he does. Two minutes, 33 seconds left in the game.
He's been amazing from beyond the arc, and that is his shot right there. And it brings him back to within one. And again, where I do stress that, I do think the bonus is going to play a huge factor for Bridgewater Rain. And with still two minutes left in the game, if they keep this up, they could really pull away and give Brockton their first loss. Absolutely. We were just talking about that last break. You mentioned that before. I thought that was a great point by you. I mean, you got 10. If you if you lean the wrong way and you hit a B.I. player, guess what? B.I. is going to go to the line. All right, so here we go as we come out of this break. Uh, we'll get you a closing. Well, we'll probably, we're probably going to bother you guys, and we're going to bother you again once we, go to, <laughs> if we have another time on this. We'll probably have like eight more the way this game's going. I want to thank Craig Salvador and Christian Bracero checking in. Of course, Brian, Brian Barad doing all our fine directing up in the crow's nest here at uh, Bridgewater Radom High School. Officially 159 left, 58-57. Brockton on the inbound pass. As they have Azor bringing it up, he's guarded by Hippolyte. Trying to try to pick his pocket, goes around, went too hard. Off the glass, won't go. Rebound. It's going to be off Brockton. I'm really Brockton. surprised about that. I thought it was Doug Owls that had the last touch on that. Yeah, me too. Let's go, let's go. But that's, that's why I told you when we talked about that last uh, travel, I'm, I'm giving up on the calls. <laughs> I, I, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah. All right, so we're going to have a so, change of possession. So our eyes were yeah. So, yeah, we weren't losing our minds. Right. So that's going to be the first time out called by Brockton as well. All right, time out, time out. Brockton, we'll, st we'll stay right here. Guys, we have you. Uh, real fast this time, let's talk to, uh, let's talk to Craig as we, go and come out of, as we go into this break. Your thoughts, my friend? Uh, that's a tough break right there for Bridgewater Random. You know, at first they thought that they got the ball going out of bounds. They thought they were going to have the chance to have possession, drive down, and maybe take the lead. But the call was reversed, so it's going to stay for Brockton. So that is actually, that might be a tough hit for um, Bridgewater Random. Again, 146 left in the game. So if it comes down to one possession, that could be the possession that really just puts the state, puts the final nail in the coffin. There you go. The what? time is ticking. Can you feel the, the, the tension, Tom and Dom? No, Can not you anymore. That? You know, it's funny. I don't know if you heard me and Tom talk, and I was talking about the fouls. We were trying to diagnose what these refs are calling. I told them I gave up last time I complained about a travel call because I don't know what I'm calling anyway. <laughs> and they, I, don't even, I don't know if they do. But, guys, thanks again. All right, so as we come out of this break, here's your scenario. Scenario, 146 left in the game, 58-54. Brockton, but Brockton is in the double bonus. He put Taunton, excuse me, Taunton is in the double bonus. All right, so here we go. The, it'll be an inbound pass right under, in the BRN, of course, under the, under the BR Hope. Inbound pass and driving a little flow to see if he hits it off the glass, won't go. Rebound, Doherty, Glenn, we're going to have a foul. Yeah, yeah, both uh, Fernandez as well as Rabunskis was really trying to get that jump ball. I mean, it'd still go back over to Brockton, but, you know, alleviate some kind of pressure. But Yeah, but now they're, gonna hurt. They, they're up to five now. That was uh, Tony's fourth, team fifth on the inbound pass. Doherty Glenn, he kicks it out, tries to kick it out. Gets yeah. it over to Cuba now. Cuba, he'll start it all the way up to Azor now. Guided by Hippolyte with 131 left. 20 seconds and running on the shot clock. There's Lee inside. Doherty Green goes high off the glass and in. The lead is three. 60 to 57 with 117 in running it left in this game. Doug Alves looking. Rumbunkus looking. He has a look. He's hit three before. There's Doug Alves covered by the big man Azor. Now there's Hippler. He's going to try to drive baseline. Floater off the glass. Won't go. Rebound Doherty Glenn. Doherty Glenn for Brockton. A minute left in the game. Now driving, stepping back. He's going to use a whole shot clock. He's no fool. Approaching 10 seconds left on the shot clock. 37 seconds left and drive by himself. Kind of an offensive foul. That was big. That was big for the Trojans. That was huge. Great job. That's a second, second time. time. Yeah, we were just thinking the same thing. But uh, that's going to be a big, big uh, 
shot in the face for the boxes. And that could be the reason why this game could be going into overtime. Shot clock differential by just under three seconds. All right, here we go. Hippolyte now for three. Won't go. Rebound. Travis Green, we're going to have a foul. Let me see what that's going to be. It's going to be a hold on 1-2. Is that who they're calling it on? Yep. So oh, that's Doherty Glenn. Yeah, Doherty Glenn. So 21, I'm sorry. This Hits. is big. Yeah, this is big. You know, in this situation, though, what do you do if you're BR? Do you want to get the two points in and, you know, have Brockton waste the shot clock and, you know, get down to the last barebone second? Or do you get Fernandez to get the first one up and then oh, no, which he the doesn't? First. Which is now you have to go for it. But, you know, this is a big situation for uh, for BR. What are you going to do? Do you want to uh, get that back or rebound? You're going to follow him. Yeah. You're going to follow him right away. All right, here we go. Misses the second one. Oh, covered by Sam Brown. Sam Brown looking, looking, trying to get it over. This one Bunkus. Time out. Oh, he wanted to shoot. Well, that was a small play. Time out, time out. Time out. Uh, Bridgewater random guys. 12 seconds left. Um, I don't know about you, but I think this game's finally getting exciting. Oh, I agree. <laughs> Oh, this game, it's, it's coming down to the wire, I tell you that much. It's definitely, definitely a close one. It's a very smart timeout from Bridgewater a &M. Calling it, again, one possession game, just three, uh, down by three points. And I think what Bridgewater a has to do is when they're going to inbound it, they got to find Hippolyte. Hippolyte has been that guy shooting from the outside. He has been unbelievable from beyond the arc. So Bridgewater a needs to find him. He has, I believe, tw uh, 34 points. Seven, uh, seven points from beyond the arc. Seven Sorry. points, okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, he's been he's been absolutely. I would have said 34 too if he showed me that. Yeah. No, sorry, I was trying. To go, I was trying. To, I was trying to say uh, seven points would be on the yard. That was my fault. Christian, uh, anyway, he's been an absolute <laughs> stud. So Christian, what about you? What are you thinking? Offensively, Brockton, yeah, a little bit scrambled up. I think they're gonna pull through. I don't want to be the jinx of the yard, but I think they're gonna pull through. And the last time out before this one, uh, Coach Bowen, he was frustrated. This time out. He looked pretty calm, so I think he's getting his team ready to just finish this game off. All right, guys, thank you. As we come out of this break, again, here's your scenario. 12.5 tenths left of a, tenths of a second, 12.5. 60-57 um, Brockton, but a Bridgewa uh, bridgewater Raynham inbound possession in the Brockton end. And I have, to, I have to agree with Craig on this one. I think one of the big things you got to do is you have to give it over to uh, Hippolyte. 26 points and... Uh, 20, uh, 21 of them are from beyond the arc. The three. Oh, that was... And they'll follow them. They had the right idea. They just couldn't execute that last play. And when I say the entire bench, both the entire audience on the BR side was on the edge of their seat with that shot, I kid you not, everyone held their breath, and I think everyone... Including Hippolyte had a little bit of skip in the heartbeat. So this is what you have. I mean, well, you know, you called a coach. Of course, I'm for uh, Craig Salvador. You called, and, and so did uh, Thomas Pike. I mean, you guys called it. He just uh, he just didn't have a. I don't think he had a good enough look. He was well covered. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those situations. He was he was five feet from beyond the arc. It's you know, it's a lot of space. But you know, when you put pen to paper, you you had your opponent on the ground. You can just jump in. Get a couple extra feet in and just be right next, uh, right next to the line. You'd be up for three, and you'd yeah. be in a better position for it. Right, right. Yeah, that was definitely what I was thinking of that too. He's like, the play was right. They got it to the right guy to take the shot, and he did have time. And again, his defender was on the ground, but again, just doesn't always go. You know, it's a tough break, and that could be the game really with that. That might be it for Bridgewater Raynham. Again, it was the right play. It was the right call. Just couldn't connect with it. And it was, yeah, that's a good way to put it, too. And, you know, it's it's the jitterbugs, the butterflies that are in your chest. You know, Hippolyte definitely felt it. You could see it in his face. It was nothing but net in his face, but just gave a little too much oomph in that one. All right, so that'll do it, and that's the game. All right, guys, I want to thank you for your, your final thoughts before we step away. Well, they're still in the feed, right? <laughs> I don't know if they're going to do a nice Undertaker pose, you know, right in the middle oh, of the court. Weak. But then that would be, you know, unsportsmanlike. But uh, I'm seeing the teams right now. They're definitely, you know, just giving each other high fives and uh, respecting 
and put it to work. And it was a good game, very good game, intense. Yeah, very close, very intense, really coming down to the final wire, coming down to the wire. And this game, very similar to the last game they played. I think this game it was uh, less, it wasn't as much scoring, so I think both teams uh, really played more of a factor. They really focused more on defense in this game, but again, just a real close one. It's a tough loss for Bridgewater Raynham, and yeah, Brockton stays undefeated. So again, a really close one that just comes down to the wire. All right, guys, thank you. Great job, like always. Your final thoughts, Tom, before we uh, step away? You know, when it comes, when you look at the Trojans as a whole, this was definitely a big game for them. When you look at uh, the boxes, this is a big game for them. This has been anticipated for weeks now, and both teams performed to their absolute best. Both teams really put their entire game on the line, and they really performed each other perfectly. You know, this was a really great matchup, and you could tell by the audience itself, everyone was on the edge of the seat, especially when Hippolyte went up for that top three. You know, this is one of those games that really, it doesn't break a season, but it makes you realize, you know, what did you do right? What did you do wrong? And I think when the Trojans go back into the locker room, I think they're going to look at it and be like, you know what, like, this is what we did right. This is what we did really right. And this is the one thing that we need to work on. It's hard to get in that situation where it's, you know, you have like the last three seconds on the line, you have to go up for that three. It's a very hard situation nonetheless. Not a lot of people can do that. A lot of pressure and a lot of things on the board. But this is a good game. This is a very good game. It really was. Your final score, Brockton 60, Bridgewater Raynham 57. For Thomas by Craig Salvador. Christian Becerra and Brian Broad. I'm Dominic Damiano. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast of high school uh, high school basketball. Our next broadcast is the makeup game between Dartmouth tip-off at 4:30. We will catch you next time. Everyone have a fantastic weekend.